Hello and welcome to my No Bells and Whistles podcast. My name is Obi Grace Nicker, aka Ojin. I'm an author, speaker, publisher, mother, etc. And today you're listening to episode one. Sorry, this is not episode one. This is actually episode three. And episode three is about shedding a little bit of light about why I have not published any episode since the beginning or when Odia went live. So first of all, I was invited to be a part of um, Odia in February 2021, that was last year. And then in April 2021, again last year, Odia went live. But by the time Odia went live, there was so much going on with my life, in my personal life. Well, just before Christmas, and that will be Christmas 2020, I had a major surgery. And over the following weeks, I had ambulance, practice nurses, district nurses in and out of my house. Now, by March, my house was infested with fleas. I didn't have any pets. My neighbors have no pets. And so they had no fleas in their homes. This meant meant that one of the people visiting brought it in. Long story short, within days, they multiplied like crazy. Nothing I tried seemed to work. Even the first fumigation felt like I threw them a party. They came back with vengeance, jumping, darting at my face and eyes and ankles. They made their way into my bed and sofas. They were just everywhere. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't relax, eat, do anything. My home, which was once a haven, had literally become a nightmare. I found myself wanting to be outside all the time, but I couldn't because Sir COVID was hanging out outside. This was hell. I was extremely exhausted from lack of sleep in pain from the surgery, lost my appetite and constantly close to tears. One of the fumigators told me that they were hard to get rid of and can jump up to six feet. Now, I am 5'8", trust me, he was not lying. Now, another told me that even if they deep cleaned all the mattresses, pillows, upholstery, carpets, and that they laid down chemicals, which would cost over, you know, way over 500 pounds, there was no guarantee that they were all going to go. Now, he explained that this was because some of the eggs burrowed deep into the carpet, which were, you know, missed, which would uh, actually would be missed or sometimes get missed uh, during fumigation. Now, one of the things he mentioned is that the these eggs can lay dormant for a very long time and then would later break and start reproducing. So my life then became about trying to figure out how to get rid of these things. I was constantly researching, watching YouTube videos, reading people's reviews and buying products which didn't appear to work. I had become Amazon's best friend, spending so much money and getting nowhere. I tell a lie. It seemed like the produce were actually making them reproduce aggressively. In the end, with the help of my neighbor, I had to have my carpets all ripped up and thrown away, including all the mattresses and the pillars. So I now paid for a second set of fumigation done with the carpets out. Fingers crossed it would work. It worked a little bit, you know, um, I think at the time. My home had now become inhabitable. Now, apart from the fact that I had the fleas, I had condensation. This was because my home had no working extractor fans. Now, I live in a block of flat and my house is a two-bedroom accommodation. Very beautiful area. Unfortunately, the way the house was built, the extractor fans are supposed to use a fan at the top of the building to extract Uh, whatever it is that needs to be taken out of the property through the vent and 
out of the house. Unfortunately, the fan wasn't working. It will cost lots and lots of money for it to get fixed. And over time, I would ask and ask, you know, what is going with the fan? You know, would they come and fix it? And unfortunately, nothing was happening. And they just kept going on and going on. So now I had now all the steam and everything built up in the house and now forming mold in the property. In the end, I had to now get um, property removers to come and pack up all my things and put it in storage. And in the meantime, I had to move out. I moved into my mother's house for about four weeks and then moved into a hotel with my son for about three months while this was going on bearing in mind that I just had a major surgery I'm still very unwell I had to now start dealing with having my home you know repainted and the uh, what's it called the mold sorted out the tiles in every floor in my house had to be ripped up so because of the asbestos that was underneath the tiles and then the whole surface had to be, what, what did the man call it, creed, it's creed or something like that. So basically just uh, mixing something that looked like cement and putting it all over the floor to, to make sure that you know, um, we were not exposed to asbestos. Now all this took a long time because um, every time you ask somebody to do something, it, they give reasons why they couldn't do it now, that it will come today, they don't come, and it just kept taking so long. By the time all this was now done and the property, the flat was dry, I had to now recap it. But because I didn't want to run the risk of um, any more fleas being reintroduced into the property, now I had to put um, vinyl on the floor. But I couldn't put wood vinyl because the fumigator told me that sometimes they burrow in between the wood and stay there. And after a while, their her eggs will hatch and then they will come back again. I've been through hell enough. I didn't want any more of that. So now I had to now put vinyl on the floor of the whole house. I didn't know how that would work because I live in a country where... It is cold half of the year and really cold half of the year. So I don't know if it was going to be enough to keep the property warm. Fast forward. Yes, it does. The house is warm. I'm comfortable in it and so on. Now trying to get the carpet put in was another thing. I booked some people, paid them a them deposit. And then when it came to the time to do it, they now couldn't do it. I said to me they didn't have people to come and do it and wanted to push it to another one month and I've been in a hotel for so long I didn't want to be in there for too long I was spending so much money all my things for working were all in storage and I hadn't got any money coming in I couldn't keep affording to just keep spending money and nothing was coming in so I asked them to refund the deposit and I had to go on and find another set of people who would you know do the carpeting for me or put the vinyl in they came they did uh, their job uh, is the, the properties that are taking shape but unfortunately like my neighbor said they did what is called a gorilla job and basically it, it was done but it wasn't perfect but at the time I didn't care I just wanted my home back and I just wanted to move back home I was tired of being in a hotel where there was no kitchen there was no fridge so I couldn't make any meal and even if my friends wanted to make meals to give me, they couldn't because I couldn't store in the fridge. Every single day we were eating out. We had to go out. I had to go out and buy lunch for us to eat. Then we had to go out in the evening. And, you know, this was not sustainable, especially during COVID period where a lot of people were losing their job and prices of things were going up and there weren't a lot of things in the shops. Now the next thing that needed to be done was the ventilation and this just kept going on from around January all the way to July, August. The ventilation still hadn't been done. We are in June 2021 and yet <laughs> the events still has not been done. 
So I just have to manage it. But the only way that I felt that I could cope was now to reduce the amount of things in my home. So I had to get rid of a lot of things, give furnitures to, you know, um, not, you know, settees and so on, but wardrobes and a few things to charity. Shoes, clothing were all given to charity, but they all had to be cleaned out some very, you know, before they were given out. I had to become a minimalist in order to make sure that I had proper ventilation going across my home. Then when all this had been done, the carpet had been laid, the window, the floor, um, the walls had all been, you know, cleaned and the mold treated and painted. I then had to change my, the, the, not the curtains, but they had to remove where the curtains hang. So I had to go out and buy new ones and get it fixed. All this why I have money just going out and nothing barely coming in. My expenditure has become way more than my income at the time. So as soon as I could, I called the storage people, asked them to bring back the things, my things that were all in storage. Um, a few of them had to be put in uh, the building's storage space to be given away because I just couldn't bring them in. Some of the things they damaged um, either when they were bringing it in or when they were taking them out, which meant they had to all be thrown away. So I had lots of the wardrobes and tables and so on and so forth that were destroyed. So again, I had to then go out and buy new ones to replace them. Now, because when they were packing my things, they didn't pack them properly. The only reason that I'm mentioning this is in case you use the storage people to pack your things. And at the end, you want to throw away some stuff. Make sure that there's nothing inside them. I had a dressing table because I decided that I had to get rid of dressing table just so that I have a space, more space in my bedroom and so that air can circulate properly in the room. One of the things that I got rid of is my dressing table. Another thing that I got rid of was my antique uh, wardrobe, very beautiful wardrobe, wardrobes, but I had to get rid of them because they they didn't allow air into the wardrobe which meant that my clothes were now forming molds so I had to go and buy new wardrobes that were very thin and had air easily going into them. Now in the wardrobes and the dressing table there were a lot of things that were stored in it. I had very expensive perfumes that I loved that I've put in there. A lot of my children's um, toiletries were in there my uh, hair products because I've not gone natural so I was using natural hair products which were quite expensive they were all in there and I had my jewelry also all in there in my wardrobe there were some shoes that were in it and unfortunately all these things got thrown away because I didn't open the wardrobe I just told them that I didn't want the, da the damaged wardrobe brought into the flat and to put them in the storage space now while I was unpacking my things I kept wondering where all these other things were because I didn't pack them I just thought they must be in one of the boxes by the time I unpacked the last box which took days for me to get um, through them and then realized that a lot of these things had been left in the wardrobe they didn't pack it my things in the storage space had now been taken by the recycle van so now I've lost all those things. I don't really mind too much about the perfume or, you know, the toiletries, the hair products. They, they all can be replaced. The only thing that, you know, upset me a little bit was that the jewelry, some of the jewelry which my father gave me had now been, now gone. And my dad passed away 2015, so it's not like he can go buy me any new ones. So that, you know, helped me. But for the rest of the other things, I didn't mind too much. Now, last year, I would have. I would have been very upset because I was attached to those things for some reason. I was. But over the last months, you know, I went through hell. I went through depression, anxiety, 
breakdown. You know, I was so ill. I was in a lot of pain from the surgery. I had all this drama going on in my house with the fixing of it and so on. That now, all I wanted was peace of mind. I valued peace of mind more than the things that I had now lost that were in my wardrobe. I didn't care about some of the clothes and shoes that they didn't pack that I got that got missing. I guess everything that I went through had changed my perspective on life and and now material things didn't mean as much as they meant, you know, the past years. Anyway, so I finally moved back into the property around um, September and I had my first son who just graduated from university now come back home so and then I had my other son who was now starting his final year for A levels also starting school and with all that going on and all so much um, new adjustments and the fact that I had because I threw away a lot of furniture I had to find places to put certain things and now it was felt like I just moved into a new home and I didn't know where anything was it took a very long time trying to adjust trying to figure out where things were and get my head right but as if things were not enough you know I then got attacked in my home one of the staff I, I requested for a humidifier to, and it was brought into my house and one of the staff who brought it showed up a couple of weeks later to my house to collect it for no reason and when I told him he couldn't take it he tried to force himself um, into my house and take the humidifier. And in the process, he hurt me um, physically because he pushed himself and elbowed me exactly where I had the surgery. I think I had about 8 or 10 inch uh, cord in my lower abdomen. I don't remember right now, but maybe I'll check it later. And um, because of everything that's been going on, I hadn't rested properly. I it didn't heal properly. The area didn't heal properly. I still have a lot of pain internal and external, which I was still having to get investigated. So with the attack and everything that gone been going on, I was really really traumatized, and now required, you know, therapy. Unfortunately, the therapy wasn't working. And when I reported the incident, the company didn't do very much about it, which left me feeling very helpless and very unhappy. Then by December, I then caught COVID and my children caught COVID, which became another nightmare to deal with. So I thought 2020 was <laughs> a bad year because that was the start of COVID in the UK. But for 2021, it was actually worse. Personally, it was worse for me. I don't know about every other person, what was going on in your life and how you managed to cope. But it was really, really horrible. And I was ill with COVID the whole of the Christmas season. And for some reason, I had what was called long-term COVID. So January, I decided that I was going to change my outlook and I was going to change everything going on with me just simply by dealing with my the inside of me, my mindset, my outlook on life and so on. And while I was doing that, I also thought that I needed um, to move my my career forward. So the best way to do that was to enroll in some mastermind and personal development courses and while I was doing this I learned about paradigms and also learned about season the day and learning to you know not let the things going on in your life stop you from achieving whatever you want to do or going after your goals and your dreams. I started learning about my own paradigms and how they were stopping me from achieving what I wanted to do as the learning about law of attraction and so realizing how everything that had happened last year how somehow I had you know 
being the one attracting those negativities and all the horrible things going on in my life. I'll explain all that law of attraction another time. But um, the, the poor point is, you know, once I started learning about the laws of the nature, lot of uh, laws of nature, and about my mindset and my mind and how my mind controls my body and my results and how instead of waiting for a hero that could help me i have to be my own hero and start helping myself and instead of feeling sorry for myself and being a victim i can become a victor by changing my results and the only way i can change my result is to change whatever is going on inside of me so over the year i set into motion into getting some goals put out and achieving those goals now, one of those goals happened to be putting out my audio, which, you know, you are listening to right now. Now, I have a few podcasts, you know, some of them are on relationship, other ones on business, um, other one has to do with women related topics and what's going on with women. I have another one, which is around fiction. And this one, which, you know, allows me to vent and share with you the things that are going on in my life and how I'm overcoming them. Another thing that I've learned is, you know, that things happen for a reason. They shape us. They help us grow. They challenge us. They make us start seeing things in a different way and start appreciating things that we should be appreciating and letting go of things that we shouldn't be holding on to. So, for instance, where... I held on and to properties that I felt that were very important to me and meant everything and would on the more circumstances would have, you know, let it mess up my day, my emotion, and then start uh, upsetting other people by the attitude that I have towards them because of the things that I lost. And I'm talking about the things that I lost in my dressing table, my wardrobe and other things that I had to give away in order to make sure that my home felt comfortable enough for me to be able to stay in and feel comfortable, happy in. And then I started realizing that that was not as important as having peace of mind. There's nothing like having your own home. I, it was very nice. The hotel was very nice. It was changed all the time. The beds were, and the room were clean. There were a lot of things that were in there. The staff were amazing. But there's nothing like having your own home, being in your own home. And for the first time, I started looking at homeless people and feeling so bad for them because... You know, having been displaced from my home for a very long time, even though I was able to stay in a hotel, it must be very horrible for them not having a place to be in, to lay their head on. You know, when they, when it's raining and it's freezing cold or it's very, very hot, they have nowhere to go to. So when things like that happen, they, they make you start looking at life uh, in a different way. And hence the reason I call this uh, perspective with OGN because you start looking, seeing things in a different way uh, and understanding that, you know, sometimes when we think that we've, we're having a hard time, there are, we are actually better off than some people. And so we should be grateful for those things and, and not just be grateful, but also say them out to yourself. I am grateful for this. I am grateful for that. I'm grateful for the, the, that other one. And I've been sharing this with my two boys and trying to help them start seeing that in life things do happen, but hold on to the good times and be, show our gratifications for the things that are working very well. And then you see that you start attracting more nice things into your life. Well, I hope you enjoyed this podcast and I need to keep it very short. So I might continue um, some of the things that I've been sharing with you in my next episode. And I hope you do come and join me. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to like, to share, make come, put your comments, or even share your own story with me. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.